Hello and welcome back. So in the last lecture, we learned how we can read the value of environment variables from .env file with the help of config service. Now the config service is provided by config module. And in order to use the config module, we installed a nest.js package called nest.js slash config. So if I go to our nest.js application, here we installed this nest.js slash config package. And from there, we are importing this config module in this import survey. And since we have used this is global, this config module is imported for the entire nest.js application. It is imported globally. Then in order to use this config module to read the value of environment variables from this .env file, here we want to read and use this env mode environment variable in this user service.ts file. What we did is we injected an instance of this config service inside this user service class. And using that instance, we use this get method in order to read the value of this env mode environment variable. Now what I want is in the app module, we are using this type ORM module and inside this type ORM module using this use factory function, we are specifying some settings for our nest.js application. And here we are hard coding these setting values. But instead of hard coding these values, what I want is I want to read the value from this .env file. I want to read the value of this DB host environment variable and I want to assign its value to this host property. In the same way for this port property, I want to read the value of DB port. All right, so we do not have that environment variable here. Let me create it. So the name of the environment variable will be DB port and I'm going to assign 5432 this port number to this DB port environment variable. And I want to read this value of this DB port and I want to assign it to this port property. In the same way, I want to read the db underscore username environment variable and assign its value to this username. Same thing I want to do for password and database. So how can we do that? Now, if you see when we wanted to use the config module, basically the config service in this user service.ts file, there first we injected an instance of this config service inside this user service. And before that, we also imported the config module globally inside this import array. So when we have imported it globally inside this import array, it is available for all the modules which we have in our nest.js application. But it does not mean that this config module will be available for this type ORM module also. Because this type ORM module, we are getting it from a third party library. This type ORM module, this we have not created. This module is not a custom module. Right. Here, this config module will be available for all our custom modules like the user module, tweet module, profile module, hashtag module, auth module, etc. But this type ORM module, it is not our custom module. So for this type ORM module, this config module will not be available. So in order to use this config module inside this type ORM module, first we need to import it. So in the import array, we are going to import config module. Now, once we have imported the config module, this config module also provides us the config service. And using that config service, we can access the environment variables from this .env file and use it in our nest.js code. So in the inject array, we are going to tell nest.js that it has to inject an instance of config service for this type ORM module. And this is not it. We also need to specify to which variable the instance of this config service should be assigned. So to this method, I'm going to pass a parameter. I'm going to call it as config service. Okay. And it is going to be of type config service. All right. And in order to use this config service, we also need to import it from nest.js slash config. So now nest.js is going to inject an instance of this config service and it is going to assign it to this config service parameter. And now all we have to do is we have to use this config service. So for example, let's say here I want to read the host name from this db underscore host environment variable 
and I want to assign its value to this host property. So here what I can do is I can use this config service and on that just like how we learned I can call this get method and there I can pass the name of the environment variable whose value I want to read and assign it to the host property. In the same way, let me copy this line. I am going to read the port number using db underscore port environment variable and I want to assign its value to this port property. For the username also, I am going to use db underscore username environment variable and I want to assign its value to this username property. Then for the password, we are going to read the value of db underscore password environment variable and we want to assign its value to this password property. And here for the database, again, we are going to read the value of db underscore name environment variable and its value we want to assign it to the database. Okay, so in this way, we are reading the value of these environment variables and we are assigning it to these properties. So in order to read the value of environment variables, first we need an instance of this config service. On that, we can call the get method and using the get method, we can read the value of any environment variable from the .env file. All right, now here the port number should be a numeric value. If I currently save the changes, and if you go to the terminal, let me stop the process first and let's rerun the process. And here you will see that we do not have any errors. Everything is working as expected. But this DB port which we are reading here, this should be a numeric value, right? But in an environment variable file, when you create an environment variable, the environment variable name and its value both are treated as string value. So here also to this DB port, we are assigning this 5432, but this 5432 will be treated as a string value. It will not be treated as a numeric value. So when we are reading this 5432 value, when we are reading it as a string value here, this get method, it is going to return us the value of this DB port as a string. What we want is we want to convert it to number type. And for that, I'm going to use a plus before that. With this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the terminal just to check everything is working as expected. So we do not have any errors. And now just to verify that the application is working, let's go to Postman and let's make a GET request to this URL. If we get the response from the database, that means the database connection is successful and our application is working as expected. So if I send the request, you will see that from the database, we have received this user in the response. So our database connection is successful and our application is also working as expected. But now, instead of hard coding the value for these properties in the NestJS code, now we are reading the value for these properties from an environment variable file, and then we are assigning it to these properties. So here in the code, we have not hard coded any values. Instead, we are using environment variable for storing all the configuration settings of our NestJS application. And this is a most secure way of storing and using the configuration settings in your NestJS application. All right. So this is all I wanted to cover in this lecture. In the next lecture, let's learn how we can load environment variable files dynamically based on the environment which we are currently working in. This is all from this lecture. Thank you for listening and have a great day.